Hi guys, Blackbox here. Welcome to the second part of the cold and dark startup procedure. In the first part we have completed all the cockpit preparation up to the point where we start to program the MCDU. Okay, now that the luggage is arriving, uh, we better get started. Okay, here we have the MCDU, the Multipurpose Control and Display Unit. Now, in order to use the full potential of the Flight Managed Guidance System, we have to program this uh, MCDU very carefully. Since there's a lot of data to be uh, put into the MCDU, it's quite easy to forget some uh, inputs. So it's quite important to stick to a certain flow. Now, to help you remember the flow, pilots use a so-called mnemonic. I personally use the mnemonic diff rip, where each letter describes a step in the flow to program the MCDU. So the first letter is D and it stands for data. To get to the data page, you press the button data and then aircraft status. On this page, we make sure we have the correct engine type and that the current NAV data cycle is valid. So next is I and it stands for init. So we press the init button. So on this page the first thing we do we enter the departure and the destination airport. In this case departure airport is Zurich and we're flying to London Heathrow. Next we have to put in the flight number. Today we are Edelweiss 744. Then we put in the cost index for the flight, usually between 25 and 30, depending mainly on the current fuel price. We're planning to fly at level 340, that's what we put in at the cruise flight level prompt. Now on this page we'll have to put in the zero fuel weight and the zero fuel weight center of gravity before departure. Now if you don't have an external program to uh, get you all this uh, data, there's a way to find out uh, through the MCDU. You simply press the MCDU menu, then go to Options, and then, first of all, to the Fuel page. Now, since I don't have an external program uh, to help me with the fuel planning, I go to the website onlineflightplanner.org, and there it says uh, I need about 6,500 kilograms of fuel. But since we have to expect uh, some holding overhead London, I'm gonna take a little bit of extra fuel. And so I've decided to take uh, 7,000 kilograms as a block fuel. So now we can go to the payload page. And there on the top left, we can see that we have a zero fuel weight of 57 tons and the corresponding zero fuel weight center of gravity of 27.3 units. Now with the 7,000 kilograms of fuel, we have a gross weight of 64.0 tons and a center of gravity of 26.3 units. This center of gravity will later determine our trim setting for takeoff. Okay, so now we'll get back to our flow. And for now we just leave the zero fuel weight and the center of gravity uh, prompt empty. Now we're getting to the F and the F stands for flight plan. And the first action here is to select a departure route. For this we press the line select key at Zurich and then departure. From the flight planning tool we can see that the sit ends at Webit and so we select the departure Webit 3 Whiskey. After that we have to enter the route all the way up to the arrival point at London Heathrow. Now to do this we press the line select key at the point Webit. And then on the right side, the prompt airways. Now on the top left part, into the prompt via, we select the first airway, which is Tango 51. Then we enter the next waypoint at which a new airway begins and that is Lazun. And again 
we take the next airway uniform November 176 and put it in the next prompt then on the right again the next crossing waypoint where a new airway begins which is Lumel and so on Now once you reach the last prompt and the routing hasn't been completed, you just simply press insert. Then on a flight plan page you scroll all the way down to the last waypoint, which in this case is Romeo Lima Papa. Then you select this waypoint and then back to airways. Now we can continue with the programming just like before. So now we are reaching the last waypoint, which is Aleso, before the instrument arrival route begins. In order to program the arrival route, we press the left prompt of our destination airport and then on the top right, arrival. At the moment we're expecting runway 27 right, so we've selected that. And looking at all the standard arrival routes, the only one which makes sense coming from the southeast is the wheeled one foxtrot arrival. So we'll go ahead and select that arrival route and then press insert. Now we scroll through the flight plan until we get to the point Aleso and we see that the first point on the arrival is Sandy and so we close the flight plan by clearing out the flight plan discontinuity. Now the whole route is inserted and after wheeled we can expect radar vectors for runway 27 right. Going back to our flow, we can see that next we'll have to set the radios. For this we press the Ratnav button and for the Webit 3 Whiskey departure route we need the VORs Kilo Lima Oscar and the second one is Whiskey India Lima. Once the radios are set, we'll continue in our flow and uh, letter I is up next and that stands for init again. And uh, since we have our final zero fuel weight and weight figures, we can uh, type those in. In the next step, we'll see that the block fuel is correct, seven tons. And so the FMS calculates the gross weight for takeoff and the, also the landing weight. Now one thing I've forgotten to put in is the alternate. And so we we'll put in uh, Stansted as the alternate airport. And now the FMS can calculate the alternate fuel. Now we have to do one last thing and that is to put in the average wind component. Today we have a headwind of 30 knots on average. Now that has been completed, we can go to the last letter, the letter P, and that stands for performance. Okay, so here's the performance page. Um, you can see there's already some numbers uh, in it. For example, the runway 28, and also due to the fact that the weights have been put in, the F speed, S speed, and the green dot speed has already been calculated by the FMS. The transition altitude 7000 feet is uh, set and also the thrust deduction and acceleration altitudes are already processed. The same goes for the engine out acceleration altitude. So all that's uh, left to do now is uh, put in a takeoff flap setting. In this case we'll use flaps 1. Now for the flex temperature I'll be putting in 40 degrees today in order to meet the climb requirements. For the speeds, there's a little trick you can use. Just press the line select key next to the speed and the FMS will give you a suggested speed 
which you can then put into the boxes. Once that has been completed, we have uh, one more thing to do, and that is to select the horizontal stabilizer position for takeoff. Now for this, you only need to look at the trim wheel, which you'll find uh, left and right of the thrust levers. Now, if you remember, looking at the payload page, the FMS already gives you a takeoff center of gravity value. In this case, it's 26.3. Now on the trim indication, you just look at 26.3 units and then take the trim units on the right. In this case, it's 0 0.5 up. I just put that in next to the flap position and uh, that completes all the necessary inputs into the performance page. And that concludes the second part of the uh, dark and cold startup procedure. In the third part we'll do our briefings and uh, read all the checklists for pushback and so on.